Hey, you mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I am out uh, doing some twilight mushroom bothering with my UV flashlight and my nice and shiny knife that shows up well when the sun is setting. But I found this gorgeous little mushroom I want to show you. This is the magenta coral mushroom. The scientific name for this beautiful little fungus is Clavaria zolingeri. And as you can see, it's sort of this like blunted and, uh, you know, pretty frail fruiting body. It is quite small compared to a lot of our other sort of coral type or coral looking mushrooms. As you can see, these are, you know, the individual pieces of a, um, you know, a whole fruiting body because they're very, very delicate. But they uh, sort of have these little clubby edges uh, or, you know, clubby tips, but they're not regular or symmetrical. It's more like this little, uh, you know, spray of purplish, uh, frail, but beautiful material at the base. Again, I want to show you this one more time. Uh, this is edible. This is the only the second time I have found this species. And so, you know, the first time I was out in the woods, I collected it and I got a verification of my ID when I got home, but I uh, didn't bring it with me, especially considering that, you know, um, at that time I was out looking for some of these chanterelle mushrooms that are ever so common in uh, my part of the South in North Carolina. Here we go. Some red chanterelle action. So you know, when I first found this beautiful uh, mushroom, I was, you know, delighted to photograph it and uh, ask about it. But, you know, there are a lot of the coral mushrooms that, um, you know, if you're interested in eating them, uh, that are larger and more, you know, uh, I guess, substantial. Nonetheless, this is a beautiful little thing. And uh, I will add uh, on the thumbnail a photograph of this mushroom with a little coltricia uh, mushroom growing at the base. And I'm going to try to harvest it really quickly, but uh, because it's twilight, it's a little bit hard to sort of appreciate um, the shininess of this little uh, coltricia mushroom. Coltricia is the genus and uh, the um, it is most likely coltricia montagni. I suppose. Anyway, I'm going to go real quiet uh, with my name uh, scientifically, but uh, they are oftentimes a sort of brownish or cinnamon color. They have pores underneath. This one's sort of brown, um, but oftentimes they're like almost yellowy and big and, and lumpy. Um, and then a finely um, sort of velvety top. And this one's a little split, but you can also see it's almost like a little concentric zoned eye. And so uh, one of the common names for one of the Coltricia species is the tiger's eye. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, also, um, Coltricia cinnamomea, I think, is the type species for this genus. And it tends to be larger than the ones I have been um, looking at uh, today. And you can see, let's see if we can point out um, a conjoined bit of our, our uh, purple clavaria, our magenta, um, our magenta coral, along with our coltricia here. So uh, coltricia cinnamomea is uh, the cinnamon uh, coltricia, and it's, it's larger generally and a little more reddish in color. But, um, you know, they're sort of leathery uh, in the same manner as turkey tail, so they're not like an edible. But um, anyway, I'm going to add the photo of these two mushrooms clumped together uh, under this UV flashlight because that's something I think you should really try out and I'm getting more um, disciplined is the right word, I suppose, about it myself. So this is a 365 um, nanometer UV beast flashlight. There are a lot of other brands that are totally reputable, but it's really, really fun uh, to spend time just, well, I can't do it. <laughs> I almost flashed myself in the eyeball. Uh, but, you know, when you're out in the woods, even during the daytime, it's really fun to look at insects, look at mushrooms, look at lichens under these lights. And, um, 
it's also fun to take photographs. And I found that taking photos, for instance, of uh, millipedes are my favorite. They show up this beautiful cyan color and they're very common here. And uh, during the daytime, it's really easy to snap a photo with this uh, light. And when it's dark, it's a little more difficult to actually get um, this sort of cyan uh, colored UV light on it. And I say cyan color UV because 395 nanometers is the sort of purple black light that you have uh, at ns, ns parties. And that is great and fun, but um, you'll see a lot of different like bioluminescent activity from that wavelength. So if you're looking at bugs and if you're looking at mushrooms, um, 365 is the one that you want. All right, so I also wanted to show you actually um, I'm gonna talk just a little bit, if you're new to mushroom foraging or mushroom bothering, uh, a couple of the things that are really helpful to me just as far, as far as general practice and things that make my experience more fun. And uh, also, you know, in the, in the process, I'm gonna show you this uh, edible mushroom that is called uh, commonly the fish milky cap. Scientific name of this edible and delightful mushroom is Lactifluus volimus. And uh, the reason for that is it's a milky cat, meaning it produces this uh, juicy fluid when you damage the gills. And in the case of Lactifluus volimus, uh, it's just this whitish, very sticky, uh, and uh, a little bit like it's, it's not translucent, but it's a little clear, sticky, whitish, and um, it uh, just gushes out of the gills. And the gills here, you can see they're tightly packed. They're attached to the stem. Ooh, I just got bitten by a, uh, I think I got ants. All right, but uh, anyway, you have like a lot of mushrooms. You have like a, a cat on top and then there's uh, the, you know, the stem and the uh, gills don't sort of, they, they don't descend down the stem necessarily, but um, they aren't uh, sort of separated by a large ring. Anyway, uh, another thing for the fish milky cat, Lactifluus volimus, and probably the most distinctive sort of feature for field identification is this color of the cap and uh, sort of the um, also the variability of the color. So it's sort of this terracotta um, color and it tends to get darker toward the middle. As these mushrooms mature, they oftentimes get more flute-like or more uh, sort of vase-like as they open up. And, you know, as you can see, this is sort of the beginning of that process. And uh, this dark center will often become very depressed. But uh, at this time, it's just a little bit of a depression. And this mushroom is probably, you know, I, I'm gonna harvest it and bring it home with me. I typically let them get a little bit bigger, but not too much. It sort of depends on weather conditions and whether a mushroom is going to grow up to uh, be a uh, large and delicious size. Um, word of, I guess not caution, but just like edibility notes with Lactifluus volimus. There are a lot of lactarious mushrooms. Some of them are quite uh, spicy hot. This is another Lactifluus mushroom right here that is, um, it, it is one of the peppery Lactifluus mushrooms and it's very, very peppery. And so it's totally unpalatable. This uh, mushroom has a very uh, sort of unpleasant fishy aroma when it's fresh. Also, as um, you know, you've damaged these gills a little bit, um, as time goes on, they will sort of stain this darkish brown. And so between the stickiness and the smell of this, uh, this fluid, which is like fishy, but also a little latex, uh, and then the smell of the mushroom itself being sort of fishy. It's like, this is, I'm, I'm selling this edible mushroom short and it's really hard to be like identifying it in the field. It seems like it might be totally disgusting. And then you bring it home and you cook it thoroughly and it remains um, very comparable or appropriate to call it a fish milky cap, except it becomes sort of a like rich, uh, you know, like a rich dark fish. So it's very good in curries and things like that. Curry in particular is what I prefer it in. Uh, but it's just this gorgeous mushroom that also uh, the stem I, I want to highlight as well. It's sort of um, smooth and it is a little frail. And so like a lot of your... Um, Lactarius and Lactifluus mushrooms, that's the two genera that are 
uh, milky caps. A lot of them have like stout and kind of snappy uh, stems. And sometimes they have these big pits called scrobiculi and that's super fun. But uh, in the case of Lactifluus volimus, it is a much more fragile stem. I'll open in a second. But what you have inside is sort of a floofy material as opposed to a snappy, consistent stem. Also, the thing that I really like about this stem is it's sort of this lighter brownish red color. So it, you know, matches the, um, the planter pot color ever so slightly. And, you know, these zones are really evident. But then you have this sort of uh, smooth but slightly contoured and uh, rumply. Well, rumply is the wrong word. It's sort of like... Um, a, uh, a candle that has been melted and dried. And so you have uh, these sort of organic little, um, you know, contours in it. And so I really, really enjoy uh, handling this mushroom, as you can tell. Uh, so let me, let me open this up so I can show you the interior. Uh, there is a number of other lactifluous mushrooms that are edible and good. Um, one that grows in North Carolina, See, you can see Lactifluus uh, volimus, and uh, that is because this latex is very, very voluminous. And, uh, you know, I mean, as it's really gross smelling too. But anyway, there is um, another mushroom that I uh, find to be uh, in, you know, same flavor profile called the corrugated milky cap. It is a mountain, you know, mountain dwelling species for the most part. And uh, it has a more sort of pronounced uh, zone situation going on. And it's a it got a little sort of spikiness. So it looks more like corrugated metal. Uh, and it is very popular, again, up in the mountains. And in a particular part of uh, sort of like West Virginia and, um, you know, adjoining areas, they call them Bradleys which is kind of an unusual common name. And I wanted to highlight that because I'm gonna talk about just like a couple of my basic practices with like learning mushrooms, learning mycology, and, uh, and giving yourself a little bit of grace with common names, with scientific names, all that fun stuff. So um, when it comes to Bradley's, it is a perfect example of how common names are, uh, can be fun. They can also give you sort of like a regional story or an understanding of how people have a relationship with this mushroom. But those stories tend to become apocryphal. So I asked my friends, why do you call the corrugated milky cap Lactifluus corrugus? Uh, Bradley's and they're like well that is a really good question I guess there was probably a guy named Bradley who collected them and made delicious food for people and that is most likely true but outside of the context of that particular region it's really hard to um, you know use that common name and have anybody understand what you're talking about that said you know it can be very challenging to get your um, you know head around the scientific names I do recommend it if you are uh, trying to decide if you're going to like, uh, you know, forage or observe mushrooms sort of on a casual basis. And you may really find that it is not worth the time and effort to learn a lot of Greek and Latin and combination names, especially considering that we're discovering new mushrooms all the time and recategorizing them all the time. So if that's, uh, you know, where you're at, Common names are great and, you know, taking photographs and um, using field guides is a really great way to, you know, learn mushrooms in your area. I'm a slow learner and I'm totally comfortable with like acquiring sort of a group of mushrooms per season as far as my learning is concerned. And uh, that, you know, being the case, um, I do love uh, learning the scientific names and collecting them. First of all, because the uh, you know groupings and categories help accelerate my learning. So what I've been pointing and waving around at you are different golden uh, chanterelle mushrooms. Uh, this is Cantharellus velutinus, is the specific species, and uh, velvety chanterelle is the common name for it. And uh, this is the golden variant of that specific species. It grows all over the place in the south. And, uh, you know, it has this beautiful rusty sort of orangey staining reaction and these really dainty but beautiful false gills is the name of that feature, that fork and run down the stem. And if you open it up, it looks like string cheese inside and it looks like a little flower. Like it's just a gorgeous little critter. 
and of course edible and good. And the Cantharellus genus is, um, you know, that contains all of the chanterelles. So when I moved to North Carolina, I was familiar with Pacific Northwest chanterelles, uh, Cantharellus formosa, and uh, it was, um, one of those things where when I came here, I was sort of surprised by the size and also the lack of deep and forked wrinkliness on the chanterelles I was seeing here. But because I was really like, I know what a cantharellus mushroom looks like, I have a, a head start in sort of learning the specific ones where I live. So um, this is a really nice little cantharellus that is a bit unusual. Like this is the outside baseball of cantharellus and they're all edible and most of them are yummy. Um, this is the cinnabar red chanterelle. Uh, Cantharellus cinnabarinus is the scientific name for it. This is a really large one. So we just uh, had a tropical storm come through and uh, so it really blew up a lot of our mushrooms, but it's a good example of sort of the largest type of specimen you'd find of this edible little mushroom. So first of all, unlike this um, you know, golden uh, chanterelle I've been showing you, the color is obviously quite different, but also these gills are far more frail, but they still have that forking uh, behavior that you can see, and it runs down the stem a little bit. I will show you a couple of um, smaller ones that are much more typical of their size. Uh, let me see if I can get, yeah, yeah. So as you can see, it runs down the stem, but it isn't quite as pronounced or distinctive as a chanterelle that ultimately it runs so far down the stem that you end up with this sort of scaly, vasey, wonderful, flowery thing. So, uh, you know, they are kind of unusual as far as their size and also uh, another thing about them is most chanterelles, when you open them up, they're like string cheese on the inside. As you can see, your Cantharella cinnabarinus is almost hollow, but it has a little bit of like whitish stringy uh, stringiness on the inside. Beautiful little mushroom, very, very common, and also grows in these spectacularly big patches sometimes. And uh, often like right on the banks of, um, uh, creeks in particular in moss and so like this sort of orangey vermilion cheerful poppy color uh, with a nice chill background of moss really just it just checks many of my boxes uh, so I want to show actually this is um, probably the only mushroom that you would mistake that little cantharella cinnabarinus for this is a little uh, hygrosabi mushroom or a little waxy cap mushroom. And so, whoop, and they are very delicate, uh, but they have a lot of the same colors. And this one is really falling apart on me. But the thing that makes a waxy cap, and there are many species, many are very brightly colored. The thing that makes them distinct, and you can see there's a really clear delineation between this stem and this little cap. They are separate structures. Also waxy caps, uh, their name is uh, because the gills in particular have a nice waxy feel to them. They are, you know, harmless, but at the same time, they aren't cantharellas, so they aren't a chanterelle in the, um, well, in any sense. I was about to say in the classic sense, uh, but in any sense whatsoever. That said, I love the waxy caps. They're really cool, especially the witch's hat, which is very colorful, very conical, and it uh, has these um, sort of blackish stains that come onto its uh, reddish and yellowish surface. So it is just... It's the bee's knees, it's the grasshopper's elbows, it's all that stuff. All right, so I wanted to talk to you really briefly about how I got here, how I found uh, this wonderful um, magenta coral mushroom that I started with here. So I was visiting this chanterelle patch and uh, I love this spot because it is one of those places where I can look up the hill instead of down the hill. 
highly recommend that if you're getting started or really at any time because you cannot just start to recognize uh, mushroom, you know, colors, but also mushroom shapes. And so when I am walking on a hillside, I can look up and I can see things popping up like this. And they, especially the ones that are mature, uh, when I'm talking about, you know, chanterelles, but a lot of other edible mushrooms, you'll see a big honker on the hillside. And as you approach, then you'll see a little honker and maybe even a littler honker. And they're all, uh, you know, all of a sudden you're surrounded by delicious mushrooms. So looking up the hill as opposed to down the hill is also how you spot these dainty little, you know, purple things and these, uh, these units that are just so spectacular. Um, and, you know, to that point, this is a fairly popular area for people to go mushroom foraging. It is Sunday night. And my expectation was that I'd find a few chanterelles, so I was going to walk uh, along the, the path here and look up the hill, not down the hill, and pick a few things for dinner. And uh, I found this just glorious little thing that I have only found one other time before. So I get to celebrate yet again uh, the bounty of the 2024 mushroom season. I'm really glad to share it with you and I do encourage you to play around with uh, UV flashlights. Like I am um, I'm a very boring person and so sometimes when I get uh, really restless on a Saturday night I will just take my UV flashlight out uh, and look underneath the pine tree in my backyard and I see all of these millipedes and they just light up underneath and uh you know the moss turns like uh death metal red and you have lichens that are sort of like these flashy golden colors so you know the world around you is really cool and i'm, I'm not going to try to get sentimental or deep i really hope you find a billion mushrooms especially of the great like the level of diversity in this season is just um tripping me out in all the right ways because i know i'm going to learn a lot of mushrooms and learn a lot of those scientific names you know because i personally i'm a word nerd and i like to pick up categories of things and so because i am finding a lot of unusual uh sort of coral mushrooms this year maybe i'm going to get my head around a lot more of the details of that particular uh selection of species of which there are many i hope you find a billion mushrooms i wish you luck with all of your learning adventures and let's talk again soon